I'm just a boy from Kansas out to save the world from chronic disease. And I truly mean that. Nobody is in control of your health but you. I can't heal you. Your doctor can't heal you. You have to heal you. And it's all about having the education empowerment to know what you need to be changing within yourself, within your life, to set your soul free and accomplish that best life that we all like to talk about. And I truly believe that the greatest medicine of all is to teach people how not to need it. I'm Brendan Vermeyer, the original Holistic Savage. Welcome to the Holistic Savage Podcast. Welcome everybody, Holistic Savage Podcast, super excited. We have Courtney for life, as she's known on Instagram. Courtney, my taco-loving friend, what's going on? How are you today? I'm fantastic. It's raining in Mexico, but I'm not complaining. You know, I mean, it's it's got to rain every once in a while. How many days of sunshine, though? Like, basically, as long as I've been following you, I've seen nothing but sunshine, so... Yeah, out of seven days of the week, it's sunny eight of them, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm good at math. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty good odds there. Well, awesome. So uh, this is funny because I, I feel a little bit more laid back. This is our second attempt at doing this this podcast thing because of you know technical difficulties. But wow, look at that shirt, huh? It's a great shirt. You know, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. All right, twinning today. I dig it. It's soft, right? It's real soft, like you know. Got to get those those soft savage shirts. Yeah. Awesome. So Courtney, anyways, I'm just rambling all over the place, but I genuinely am excited to have you on the show. Let me read your formal bio to the world so that way, you know, they they can hear the aura, the essence, and then we're just going to get into some natural, organic conversation. No clue where it's going to go, but it'll be fun. Wonderful. Okay. Official bio. (laughs) Here we go. And then we'll be informal the rest of the time, but Courtney is an ambitious entrepreneur with a passion to guide women through balanced nutrition, strength training, and confidence. She is a sponsored international power lifter and the owner of Courtney for Life, owner of Courtney for Life. Courtney has been in the health and fitness industry for over a decade and has successfully built her brand with the purpose to educate and guide women to eat with balance, lift with passion, and live with intent. She inspires through her own life challenges and uses them to show women how to thrive in their own journeys. She teaches women that confidence can be gained, that can be gained through a healthy and active lifestyle. So I really love that. I commented on it last time, but it really is a, an eloquent, concise, and it just it really does kind of capture the, the essence of who you are. So I'd love to hear what that means to you to kind of kickstart Convo. Like, what does that mean to you? What is kind of your mission statement or, I don't know. I don't know. I, just really my, I guess, mission statement or the reason my purpose, it's kind of just like sharing my own life experiences and showing that there are struggles and there are awesome successes and everything and just showing more so women that it's normal. Like um, we all go through challenging times and women sometimes feel like, oh, I'm the only one or I'm the only one struggling. And I share, I try to share like my struggles and my experiences and everything and just show people that it's normal and you can still achieve your goals with all these factors happening. And I can like, yeah, I can still go and go on crazy adventures and still hit my goals. And it doesn't mean that if I'm on vacation or I'm traveling, it means that my goals have to suffer. Um, and just kind of working with variables and literally just, I, it sounds like cheesy, but living my best life and just like just doing it and showing people that you can do it. So that's kind of, I don't know, that's my thing. <laughs> No, I really dig that. And, you know, honestly, I was just uh, doing some recordings for like our promo thing for the for the podcast show. And that was one of the things I talked about is, you know, we all like to talk about our, you know, living our best life or pursuing it. But, you know, are we really and, you know, who really is? And so I think we live in an interesting time on Instagram of, uh, well, we're the Instagram generation, which is weird by itself. Yeah. Um, but, you know, certainly, too, uh, I think what kind of drew me to your uh, online presence was that the the vibe and aura and energy you're giving off where you walk the walk, you know, you walk the walk, you talk the talk, you're, um, you can really tell by following you, like, you're living life, you're experiencing it, the highs and lows, the everyday doldrums in between everything. Uh, 
and it's very authentic. And so, you know, since the show is kind of all, all about, you know, functional medicine, functional fitness, functional psychology, functional spirituality, anytime I see somebody that is really living, breathing, practicing at least one, whereas like with you, it's more kind of two, I feel like you do, you know, you're not just like a fitness model or person or trainer, or whatever. Uh, but also there's a lot of functional psychology that I see in there. I'd love to hear what your take is on that, that comment or me pointing that out about you. Well, I'm well, definitely glad that you think I'm more than just a Fitzbo because <laughs> I would be offended. <laughs> I would just cancel this. I would cancel this video right now. Um, <laughs> No, I, I think uh, I think all of it's really important and being true to like being able to walk the walk and talk the talk and everything. Um, yeah, and, there, and there's so much more than just like this, the swipe workouts and everything on social media that we have. Like, yeah, like I said, it's so much more than just um, just working out and just nutrition. There is so much. Um, mental connection and energy and everything needed for it. It's, yeah, it's just, it's all well-rounded and everything is connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Holistic, right? Everything's connected. Yes. Uh, so, you know, I feel like we should set some ground rules here because, you know, I've got like a trillion questions and I, I have a way of, you know, so you don't have to answer but or answer to whatever extent your soul compels you to, but I'm just going to start throwing down the questions and we're going to see where this goes. All right. All right. <laughs> From, I'm nervous and excited uh, at the same time. <laughs> you're you're a, a, a fitness, uh, fitness professional living in Mexico from Canada. Yeah. Hell yes. Born and raised Canada. Yes. Okay. So um, I think we've, maybe chatted about this briefly uh, before, or at least I feel like I asked, but what, why Mexico? What took you to Mexico? Talk uh, to I smelled the tacos and I just went there. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my cheesy answer all the time. Um, so, oh, man, I fell for it too. <laughs> Yay. Um, no, honestly, before Mexico, I never ate tacos. I thought they were quote unquote bad food. So yeah. funny. Um, I've always loved the Caribbean atmosphere. So because I'm from Canada, I was able to travel to Cuba a lot. I know a lot of Americans don't go there, but I used to go there all the time. I absolutely loved it. Um, kind of like fell in love with the culture, just like the people in Cuba and the atmosphere and the energy and the food and like the music, just everything. I friggin' loved it. And I would go to Cuba by myself on vacation like two times a year. I think I went to Cuba, I don't know, seven or eight times within like a few year time period, loved it. Um, and then I went to Dominican a couple times. So right before I pretty much moved to Mexico, I took like a seven week, I'm gonna call it vacation. It was kind of like a really big turning point in my life. I went to the Dominican by myself for seven weeks. I was in like the most secluded town ever where I was in a gated community, not one person spoke English. So I was on like Google Translate every day trying to talk to people. I would have to walk 30 minutes to go buy eggs. Like I could not get any food. It was a gorgeous place and I needed that in my life. Um, and obviously to get to where I am right now. So I did Dominican, I did Cuba, and then someone had recommend or someone that I knew was in Playa del Carmen, which is the city that I'm in, which is close to Cancun. Um, they had lived here for about a year and a bit. I asked him a few questions. Is it safe? Because we hear all about Mexico not being safe. Um, I did a bit of research. I said it was good price. There's good gyms there, which was like really important to me. Um, honestly, within a week of me being here, I just said I need to be here. It felt so good. The town I'm in is like the perfect hybrid for me of the Caribbean culture that I love, but still the North American societal standards, I guess, that we're used to. So I can still go get groceries, um, all the food that I love. If I need supplements, I can go get that. Uh, there's still a lot of people here that speak English, which is good for me so I can get around to places. Um, I feel safe here. Like I said, I moved here by myself. And within a few days, I had already made friends. Everyone here is super kind. And for me, it just felt good. And at that point, I had no reason to be in Canada. So I just said, why not? Sure. And here I am. Very cool. And you've been there how long, you said? Uh, just over a year now. 
I've been in Mexico. Very cool. But you started yeah. your career over a decade ago, approximately? I Well, I started like working out, I would say 12 maybe years ago. But I, for my business, like Courtney for Life, I started that just over four years ago. Okay. Okay. About four and a half years for that. Yeah. Yeah, but you've been like fitness industry for about 10. Yeah, about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what, did you always want to do this? Like growing up, did you always have this vision or where did this, you know, vision kind of come from? Or did you even always want to be a trainer, you know? Oh, honestly, like I went to school for five years for graphic design. Like okay. I am a design creative person by heart. I still love it. So if you ever go to my Instagram or website, everything like that's all my stuff. That's why it's OCD organized. Um, yeah, so it's, it's on point. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I was doing graphic design for the longest time. And then ultimately it just kind of became a snowball effect. Like I started working out in college because the freshman 20 just wasn't working for me. <laughs> So I started like working out and then learning more, learning more, it kind of turned into a snowball effect. I became a personal trainer, I'd say about five years ago. And from there, I just, I learned that obviously there's more to your body composition than just working out. So I started doing the nutrition, took some courses on that. And yeah, it was just basically a huge snowball effect from the last five years. Well, very cool. No, you can definitely, you can tell, uh, depending on how much you see, obviously, but depending on what kind of things trainers and stuff are doing, like, ooh, that's a good trick. Like, I always see you um, getting your body fat measure with, with calipers. Is that like biosignature that you're having them do, or? Yeah, it's so much fun. So it's called yeah. anthropometry, and yeah, it's basically just testing your body through um it's basically like the calipers but he does a little bit more than that so the doctor that i work with here super cool guy he actually worked with the olympic mexican soccer team for a couple of years so he's like he's he's good um and then basically he saw me about a year ago it's been almost a year and because he doesn't really work with athletes that much anymore he's like I want to be testing you like every month to see like what happens because I'm always trying to gain muscle mm -hmm. and it is hella hard so we've been like doing so much research and collecting all this data so yeah that's been like really really fun for me to do that's super cool yeah, yeah. I love the yeah okay very cool very cool I love all the well and so now you're powerlifting too yeah, like you're a competitive power lifter, but then yeah. I also see you striking bodybuilding poses. So I'm very curious. <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> okay, so I I never really shared about it on social media because I was trying to keep it just like stay really focused on it. But back in April, what month are we in? We're in July. So a couple months ago, I was actually going to do this competition in Ohio, and it was um. It was the Ohio Power Building, Power Bodybuilding Association. So it would actually have been a competition that would be half powerlifting, half bodybuilding. So for me, I thought it was super cool because I'm not what an average power lifter looks like. Like you can actually see my abs and I have some muscle <laughs> tapping. Right? Yeah. I thought it would be really cool. Unfortunately, so I was practicing for it. I had a coach that was helping me with like the bodybuilding posing. It was really, really fun. Unfortunately, the competition didn't go through because they didn't have enough people to register. So I did just kind of randomly learn like how to how to flex and how to pose. So that's just that's just fun for me to do now. Um, but I am still really focused on the powerlifting just because for me, I really enjoy it. And I'm sure we'll probably talk about this more later or I'll talk about it more later. Um, for me, it's empowering, especially as a woman, because you're not focusing on what your body looks like. So many women get caught up, as we know, in like, I want to weigh less, but I want to be strong. Well, kind of like pick one. Do you actually want to be strong and gain more muscle or do you want to see the scale go down? And for me, it's less focus on the scale and more focus on my strength. And people look at me and they're like, oh, you kind of look like a runner. I'm like, oh, well, I'm not. I can deadlift like three times my body weight, which is pretty cool. And also it works to my advantage as like a billboard, I guess, for my business because I can prove to women you can eat like more than 2,500 calories, lift a hell of a lot of weight, 
and still be like lean and strong and not feel like you're 500 pounds. Mm -hmm. yes. I love that. I, I really do. Cause that's really what the whole holistic savage thing is all about. Like it's, you know, having, having that savage nature to, to, you know, what you're speaking, but also that very holistic way of operating. And, and as you're saying, um, you know, it's, I think a lot of it kind of comes back to doing all of this stuff out of self-love instead of self-hate. And I feel like that's something that your kind of aura gives off, right? You know, you, you're a very uh, optimistically energized, but also compassionate individual, and it really comes through. And so, you know, I feel like um, that, ah, gosh, what am I even trying to say right now? I'm really on to something here, though. But so I feel like what I'm trying to say is you can tell with you, like everything that you're doing is is really fueled by by self-love. And then you're turning around and trying to, you know, show others and kind of lead by example, which I think is amazing. But do you, I don't know, does that am I even on to something there? Does that make sense? You totally are. Um, let me just think for a moment. <laughs> just make sure, make sure. Yeah, um, I focus on like so many of us focus on what the body can't do, right? And for yeah. me, I focus on what I can do, and that's why I always try to focus on positive things. Like, sure, my body can't do a hell of a lot of things, but when I can focus and push my energy onto the things that it can do, that's where that's where all the confidence comes from. And kind of. Um, maybe partially going off topic, but I'm working on a confidence challenge with my athletes right now for the, the entire month. Every single day we have like a new challenge to kind of help build confidence. And it's not just confidence in what your body looks like, it's confidence coming from within. And I think that is so much more important because when I started focusing on what my mind and my body can do, that's where my confidence was built. Because even like three, four, five years ago, I did not have the confidence that I do now. And most of it is just because I don't give a swear word, insert swear word here. No, um, no. <laughs> for it. <laughs> okay. I was like, I don't know if I can say this because I really don't give a fuck about what other people think of me. And when I was able to release that and focus on what I can do and what I want to do and what I'm able to do, that's where my confidence has come from. So that's kind of like, I'm kind of teaching my clients how to do that as well and that confidence comes so much more than what your body looks like on the outside rock on yeah you said some really good stuff in there uh i i really like what you're saying like you mentioned focusing on what you can do rather than you know what you can't do and like this is the type of dialogue that i feel like people need to hear you know because i i really find most people you know, we, we have the stories that we're telling ourselves day in and day out. And, you know, we can drive ourselves crazy with these stories. Uh, but then they never like share those stories with others or then, you know, toxic stories kind of mingle and mesh. And it's like, this is the, the kind of thing, you know, this is exactly why I'm happy to have you here on the podcast is people need to hear this kind of stuff because it's going to resonate with them. And then, you know, like whoever can resonate with me, that's one thing, but versus you and, you know, someone else and someone else. But I think what you said was really powerful of, you know, let's focus on what we do have control of and what we can influence. And um, but also, you know, focusing on it's almost like, you know, your strengths and, you know, you play to your strengths a little bit and kind of find ways around the weaknesses, but you're still doing it out of self-love. So I'd love to even just randomly ask you, like, uh, what is practicing self-love look like for you? Oh, I'm actually doing a lot of like kind of daily self-love affirmations. <laughs> you're, you're digging in. Um, self-love for me, yeah, it's just respecting my body and um, being aware and really listening to what my body needs, where I'm sure you can totally understand like as an entrepreneur, as a millennial, as a young person, like whatever you want to call it, um, we feel like we have so much pressure to do more, to be more, to lift more, to weigh less, um, to be louder, to have more Instagram followers. I could go on and on and on, but you're not focusing on you as an individual. You're trying to mesh into what society wants you to be. And I don't think that's a form of self-love or respect at all. So when I tell people, tell myself to listen to my body, it's respecting my body enough to know what it needs. So there might be days where I'm like, you know what, I do not have the energy 
to work out. I'm just not in the right state of mind, the physical state, whatever the case is. So instead of me trying to be all badass, like hashtag hustle and grind through it, it's okay. No, I need to respect myself enough in order to take rest, in order to feel better. If I'm not having a good mental health day, I'm not going to to start pushing the negativity I'm going to respect myself enough and give myself the self-love that it needs in order to recover because I want to live longer I want to leave the world a better place than when I first found it you know what I mean so I think that's that's what my my version of self-love is I love yes like that was exactly what I was uh, hoping for there it's so good because you know I think that was I don't know when that clicked for me uh, but you know, I couldn't agree more with everything that you're saying, but that was kind of the big, oh shit, like <laughs> let's, let's do this differently. Cause you know, this whole holistic savage thing, I won't go into the, the full story, but like the short version is like, I really kind of came up with the term leading into, I think it was like my fourth bodybuilding competition. Cause like I've done five, the first one was like your typical bro science, like get fat, get lean you know, destroy your life and your metabolism and your social life. And now you have no friends and you gain all the weight back, you know, all of that. <laughs> because, because that's what society, society expects you to do, right? Yeah, it, that's, that's the norm, you know, that, that's what show prep is. Yeah, right. but I know it's mind blowing. Whereas yeah. like, you know, my second, third, fourth, fifth show was a very like walk on, you know, that it just gets smoother and smoother, <laughs> easier and easier. Anyways, my point being, though, but it's all been, you know, the more that you practice self-love, the more you actually finally fucking start accomplishing those health goals, those fitness goals, because I think the best thing that we can do to reclaim our health is practice self-love with every choice that we make on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, there's, okay, I need a rest day, but you even were alluding to it there of like, does it serve me to hang on to thoughts that don't make me strong? Does it yeah. serve me to hang on to resentment? You know, is that practicing self-love, you know, or, or would practicing self-love, as you said before, be focusing on what you have control of? You know what I mean? Yes. I yeah. think, uh, I think over the last year, like since I've moved here, I've, my, I guess my thoughts or my approach on that has really changed I would say drastically um, in terms of letting go of things that really serve no purpose, not stressing over little things. And I think that's been a big factor of the self-love and self-respect, um, not holding on to things that really don't matter, um, focusing on what I actually need rather than, let's say, what my family needs. So a great example would be people, people ask me all the time, when are you coming home or are you going back? to see your parents for the holidays or something like that. Well, am I doing it because they want me to and they expect me to, or am I doing what I need to do? Like, where is home for me now um, versus where is it supposed to be based on what society claims to be normal? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, well, now we're, we're saying it a couple of times society's projection of expectations holy shit talk about talk about a mind fuck. didn't we just you know? talk about this on uh like instagram messaging like last week i think so probably yes <laughs> yes yeah but it's yes, seriously back though you know that's i i've quoted david goggins a few times because he always talks about how reality is just this psychological warfare that none of us have any training we just are born into this world and then immediately domesticated and our brain gets programmed with this belief system that is horribly flawed and not even ours so then someday and i think maybe you know moving to mexico um you know as a as a young single woman and all entrepreneur mind you um i could see how that would definitely i think when you do that and kind of go off into the world on your own, uh, being brave and doing all these things. Talk about a sink or swim, you know, yeah. you're either going to get lost in society's smoke and, and quicksand, or you're going to fucking Phoenix it, you know, and, and, Phoenix, rise Phoenix. Above it. and so it sounds like you're <laughs> Phoenixing it, right? <laughs> I love that. Yes, uh, absolutely. So, 
I'd love to chat about the whole entrepreneur thing because, you know, definitely that's something we both have in common. And, you know, our, our missions are obviously uh, very parallel in a lot of ways. So uh, you obviously didn't see your Well, I don't know. Maybe you saw yourself as an entrepreneur when you're studying graphic design. But, you know, at what point was it that you're like, all right, Courtney for life, like, I, I see it. My third eye is open. I see the vision. Go time. Like, tell us about that. I just see, like. If you have at, if you would ask me every year for the last five years what my one year game plan would be, it would be I don't know, and it would change every single time because a year and a half ago I did not think I would be living in Mexico, and a year before that I did not think I would be running my own business, and a year before that I didn't even think I'd be a personal trainer, you know. Yeah. So it it definitely changes. Um, I feel like my vision of Courtney for life is constantly evolving. I think in a couple of years it is going to evolve more into like life coaching rather than the like bigger focus on nutrition and strength training. Um, I think it will evolve as I guess I evolve as I get older and as my client base gets older. But honestly, like I didn't know, I did not think I would be an entrepreneur ever in my life. Um, I loved being a graphic designer. I was very happy with that. But I think as I was on my way out, it wasn't necessarily so much that I didn't want to work for someone else. When I was um, a graphic designer, it was that I wanted my passion to be my job, which was personal training. And then at that point, when I had worked at that place of employment, I realized I did not want to work for someone anymore because I think big corporations like that, especially in um, personal training, are really sick and twisted. It's all about sales and they don't give a fuck. Now that I can swear, I, I'm dropping it like crazy. Yeah. Um, they really don't care about the clients. They just care about their money. They don't like no one has proper training, all that stuff. I just found it's so much bullshit and drinking like the bullshit Gatorade. And I was just so not down for that. And I said, if I want to do this, I need to do it right. Because there was one point I was actually getting in trouble and written up from my boss because I was talking about nutrition when I was a personal trainer and I wasn't allowed to do that. So at that point, I was like, I do not want to work for someone anymore. I want to start working for myself. And when I decided that I said I need to put 100% of my energy into that and there's no there's no option B because when I give myself option B that means I know that there's a chance I might fail you know what I mean so I just said this is the only option I do it or I don't and I'm not a person that sticks there doesn't stick to something just because it's hard or whatever I'm like okay I'm gonna do it by whatever means possible and here I am <laughs> That's the savage side right there. Ah, oh, love it. You, you've got to be kind of savage to be an entrepreneur, you know? I mean, I don't know that I, yeah, I mean, here we are wearing shirts, but it's just like, whew, it's a, it's a rival entrepreneur thing. And I really liked what you were saying earlier about, you know, society is kind of projecting what they want you to be right and so yeah you, there's all these fits bows or i don't even know what that word means or where it came from but <laughs> you know uh a lot of I, I think people really just crave especially in our technology era like we crave some something that feels real something that feels authentic you know so i love how you left you know corporate kind of globo gym scene because you couldn't uh, be contained in the bubble. You, you're a peacock. You got to let me fly, right? right. And yeah. I, that's kind of the same way. So in a lot of ways, I think that was kind of the first big, well, uh, a major step for you in staying true to yourself because you knew what you needed. And, you know, you knew that you couldn't serve others to the best of your ability, uh, you know, with shackles on or being restrained. Like you had to be able to do it your way. And so yeah. I think you're you've really found your voice and that's kind of what you're broadcasting out there. Yeah. And I think it's still like going to continually change Sure. as, as I evolve, as my peacock wings change color. Is that even a thing? <laughs> Why not? Like, unicorn peacock 
feathers. Yeah, you know, right. I like it. Okay, very cool. So being an entrepreneur, you know, you you have a lot of freedom, but you also have to be pretty intrinsically motivated. How do you keep oh yourself, God. you know, on point? Tell it's, me about that. I'll be curious what you say because I'm like, it's oh. not easy. Like, yes, my social media looks friggin' epic where it's like, hey, I'm going to the island today. Yesterday I was riding on like jet skis and I saw flamingos and I'm going to go swim with the whale sharks and go to like this magical island and work out at the jungle gym. Like it's, it is epic. I'm not going to lie, but to have the discipline, especially when I can look out my window and hear the ocean, like it's hard and no one is ever going to be successful if they don't have the discipline. I think that's like, as an entrepreneur, the biggest, it's not even the motivation that you need because I think that word is stupid anyway. It's the discipline that you need. And if you can't be disciplined enough to know when you have to say no to wake up at 4 a.m. because you know you have to work, then like no one's going to be successful as an entrepreneur. And I don't know if I've always had that mindset. Um, I think earlier or maybe a few years ago, like I did mature very quickly, um, but I was the younger immature teen, as I'm sure we all were at one point. So I wasn't always like this. I don't know where it came from, um, how this kind of like came about for me. But yeah, um, the amount of discipline that I have to have and my friends see that too. I get invitations all the time to go out, to go to parties, to go to adventures, to go explore and do things. And there is a time and a place, but I've also said no tons of times. And sometimes it's just because my training is that important to me. And I'm like, nope, sorry, I got to do it. Um, but yeah, having a business and having clients all over the world that I have to connect with and I have schedules and targets to meet, sometimes I do have to say no to awesomeness, but there is always a time and a place. So as long as I know I have my own balance and I'm not letting anything suffer, then I'm good. Mm -hmm. Totally. Okay. Okay. I dig all that. Well, and you said uh, motivation is bullshit. I want to hear about that. Oh. Tell me about that because I I'm a big I'm a big discipline freak. So I'd love to hear your take on motivation versus discipline. Well, I think I, I think I swear I talked about this like maybe a week or two ago. So hopefully it's still fresh in my mind as we go. Motivation is crap. It's only short term, and I think discipline is what keeps us going after the motivation wears off. So you can wake up in the morning and be like, yeah, I'm super motivated. It's Monday. I just searched the Monday motivation hashtag and I found all these great Pinterest workouts and these Instagram swipe workouts to do. And I'm so motivated to go to the gym. But then by like Thursday, you're tired or you have a party to go to. And then it kind of turns into the snowball effect. And then the motivation is gone. And then what? So for me, it's discipline. And I think discipline is exactly what I just said. It's what keeps you going far after the motivation has worn off because the motivation is only going to last so long. And if you're constantly relying on being motivated by an external source, by something else that's not within you, you're never going to be successful. Totally. And maybe I've said, like, I've said that to clients sometimes and they're like, I need motivation from you. I'm like, well, you better look somewhere else because I'm not going to start serving you bullshit. Like, I will tell you the honest truth that if you want to hit your goals, you need to stay disciplined. You have to have daily action, build healthy habits, and then that's how you're going to be motivated when you start seeing the discipline paying off. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're so right, though. And you mentioned with uh, addressing clients, and earlier you mentioned kind of moving into life coaching. I'd, I'd love to hear more about that because I just recently, like, experimentally kind of started offering life coaching on the down low. And the reason why is because, I mean, you know, okay, <laughs> you start out once upon a time as a wee lad, you know, with the, the world in your big eyes, and you're like, oh, I'm going to write down every workout note, and how can I serve you today, Mrs. Client, and, you know, all of that. And then at some point you realize that if you're really going to try to help somebody improve their life, you got to get pretty raw and real with them. And if you don't go to that raw, real psycho emotional level and, and work on that level, then you're just holding people's hands through workouts. You're telling them how to eat or even advanced clinical protocols. But if you don't go to that deep psycho emotional level, 
I just don't think you can really help somebody that much. Um, I'd love to hear your take on that and how you're kind of shifting into like life coaching or also even how you work with clients now on that energetic level. So, so especially as a woman, we have a lot of shit that we deal with, <laughs> as we all know, but there's so much stuff that we don't talk about. And when I've been able to open up with my clients or to ask them like personal questions, I can drastically transform whatever they need, whether it's their physical, their nutrition relationship, whatever the case is by digging in a lot deeper. So I've gotten so intimate with my clients that sounded really bad, <laughs> um, but I've gone down to like such a deep level with my clients that they will tell me things that they've never told someone else. They will tell me things that they never speak to their husbands about. Um, they'll talk to me before they talk to a therapist. Mm -hmm. And I think there is obviously a time and a place where I do need to refer them out to go talk to a professional, but like women have so many expectations and it's just like men, men are supposed to be the strong, like not ask anyone for help, be confident. And I have some male clients and they come to me and they're like, I'm struggling. And what am I supposed to do? I'm sorry. I, I'm just going to write your workouts and eat five more grams of carbs a day. And it's like, life is good. Like there's so much more shit going on. So when I'm trying to help, especially a woman, because 98% of my clients are females, like even things like their hormones, when they're getting their period, their cycles, um, their bowel movements, like I need to dig in and get into that stuff because everything in their body is so important. The chronic stress that they deal with, their work-related shit. Um, if they want to bitch about their kids, I am the resource or the source to do that. I'm like, just vent, just like brain dump everything on me. I will filter through the important things that I need to get out of this. But I think when I'm trying to transform women's lifestyles, it's so much more than just nutrition and training. And as I progress over the months with my clients, we learn more about that. So I feel like more often than not with the clients I have, we only touch like a super tiny bit on the nutrition and training when they check in with me every week and everything else is just lifestyle stuff. And so I feel like right now I am like, I consider myself like a lifestyle coach now, but it is the emphasis on nutrition and strength training. But I do want to get certified as like an official life coach, because I do think that education is very important to me, not just a weekend personal training course that anyone can have. Because mm -hmm. too many people have that. <laughs> right. right. Absolutely. Whew. Ah. That was all really good stuff. I think um, there's like two different directions I want to go with this. Because on the one hand, I, I want to, and I'll just say it out loud, and then we can talk about both in order or whatever. But because on the one hand, one thing I keep thinking and hearing and something I feel passionate about is uh, like if you're a fitness professional, nutrition or whatever, you can't just be that anymore. Like the game has changed, bruh. You know what I mean? And it's just like, you've got to take it to that next level where you, you like, let's say mobility is your thing and you're all, you know, functional movements and mobility and all of that. I mean, maybe that's your niche, but like, you've got to be able to address the whole person. And I think as everything is becoming much more holistic, like I, I, I can even just think over, um, you know, my career span, which is right about 10 years now. It, it's changed a lot in that time. Uh, holistic health is so much more popular these days. Like back in the day, it was like if somebody was talking about hormones, oh man, that's fancy. But these days, everybody talks about hormones casually. And then now they're talking about gut health, which is right. great. You know, you see the next fads. And anyways, but it is all beneficial evolution occurring. And I think what you're saying is monumental because yeah, like, what's going to have the bigger impact on this person's life? Like you really strictly count their sets and reps and whatever versus you, you help them navigate life. You help them, you know, practice self love through their day to day behaviors and stay focused on the stuff that matters rather than like, Hey, you know, you're going to want to be a reoccurring customer if I help you get that physique and let's get you ready for the stage. And Oh, like it's, 
we don't need weight loss cheerleaders. We need true holistic health coaches. And I think that's exactly what you are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because like when I think about it, if I give my client a workout program, which is usually when they originally sign up with me, it's like, okay, here's your macros and here's your, your workout program for the first four weeks. Those workouts are like 5% of their entire week. What about the other 95% that they're doing what they're like? That 95% is going to trump that 5% every single time. You know what I mean? So oh. I think it is, it is so much more than just, um, just like a workout program and training. And it's not about like the paycheck or recurring clients or anything to me. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that the personal trainers these days or the Fitzbos or the online coaches or whatever we want to call them. If you want to categorize me as one of those two, that's fine. Um, but I think in order for them to be successful, in order for me to be successful, there has to be so much more involved or to offer the person than just the workouts. Because honestly, like Instagram is friggin' flooded with those things and anyone can download a workout program and you have to be so much more than that in order to be successful, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I, I want to ask you about how to how to stand out here momentarily. But first, I'm kind of curious, like the nature of our work, it, it is very intimate, as you said, uh, depending on what level you go to with the client, because some people are very emotionally unavailable and it can be hard to kind of break down those walls a little bit because and that's something I find a lot in, in my practice is, you know, uh, okay, why are you here? Like, oh, you know, because I have IBS. And it's like, okay, so fixing IBS, does that make everything about your life and then all your hopes and dreams come true? Um, now, certainly if you feel like physical shit every day, okay, then that's going to be great, which is honestly, I think how I got really deep down that niche rabbit hole was just like, oh, well, if I make them feel good, then they tend to be happy. Uh, but you know, I don't know. I'm curious with you, how do you, where, how do you establish boundaries? Cause then before you know it, you get those, you know, the DMS and the text messages and it's a very empathetic, how does, how do you manage that? Not just draining you I, is really what I'm trying to get at. Um, because I've gotten to the draining point and I know I never want to be there again. That's, a, that's how I figured that out. Um, okay. that's fair. I, like my clients do have boundaries. Um, they know that I have a scheduled work time with them. And if they don't submit their check-ins, they'll get a late reply. Like I need to keep my own life and I need to make sure that I have my own energy levels full before I can serve them. That's like the biggest thing. Um, they all have access to my personal phone. They are welcome to call me at any time, which the nice thing is I set them up so well for success that they don't need that. I don't have, I have maybe a couple clients that text me in the mornings. I have some clients that I'm really good friends with. Like some of my friends are clients. So we do chat a little bit more, but they, they know that first and foremost, it's professional and this is business. So they do know that they have boundaries. If they need to connect with me, it's through my athlete portal and stuff like that. Um, where else was I going with this? Setting boundaries. Help me out here. What else? What else are we talking about? It, like protecting your energy to some degree, you know, and, and not like losing yourself in other people's narratives. Kind right. of. Okay. Um, yeah. So I have some clients that the first week they share everything with me. Like they're a completely open book, which is awesome. It's a little overwhelming at the beginning because uh -huh. I'm like, OK, didn't know this. So we're <laughs> right in. Yeah. <laughs> just grab it. Um, so there are some clients that do require a little bit more energy than some other ones. And then there's some other ones where they check in and I ask them to like, give me details on their week. What are some things they can celebrate? What are things they want to work on? And they're like, nope, I'm good. I'm like, okay. So I usually like now I've gotten to the point where if I need to ask certain questions, if they're hitting their nutrition they're nailing their workouts, everything seems perfect on paper but they're not making progress or the progress is not going the way I'm expecting it to go based on my calculations. I know I have to dig in and I'm like, okay, like you're saying everything's perfect, which is good, but there's other factors that aren't happening. And I always, they respect my boundaries. I respect theirs. If they, if I ask them and they don't want to open up, I just make sure that's like 
clearly communicated with them. It's like, well, if you don't want to tell me the stress factors that are going on in your life, I'm, I kind of have my hands tied and I don't know how to help you. And then at the same point, there are clients that, yeah, they kind of share everything with me. And that's kind of why I feel like I'm a life coach because the nutrition and training is like an afterthought. Um, and I've, I've done client check-ins before, and then I'll type out like a 20 minute message to them. I hit send and I'm like, Oh, I didn't even check your training program <laughs> like, back yeah. on that. Um, but yeah, I, I just know that there are some clients and I'm not bashing any of my clients by any means, but there are some clients that do require a little bit more energy and I'm fully prepared for them. And that's why I know like I need to protect my boundaries and I do have like a maximum amount of clients I'll take on because I know when too much is too much for me. Um, so over the years of being an entrepreneur, I've had the burnouts, the breakdowns, the overloads, the, uh, messages to my clients where I'm like, I can't have anyone talk to me for a week because I just need to get my own shit together. And again, when I'm being honest, that makes everything 100 times easier. Yeah. And it's the self care and the self respect and the awareness that I need. Like there, there have been a couple times where I will message all my athletes and say, I don't want to check in from you this week because everyone needs to go on a break. Everyone is an adult and they're more than capable of doing their own thing for a week like they'll survive or I'm like I just need to get my own shit together because my mental health is not where it needs to be in order to take care of my clients so. damn yeah yeah that's right that was so some good stuff hopefully that doesn't happen again <laughs> that, no so whew, that was good stuff I think um I really respect your communication style. I would highly consider myself a pretty direct communicator to the point that, especially in the past year, I've found myself making other people uncomfortable more often than like I intend to, because it's just like direct, genuine question that just goes straight to the heart. And they're like, oh, God, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you have to be a little bit careful with some of that. But ultimately... I just communicate and be honest. And one of my uh, kind of life mantras that I'm really hearing from you uh, is, is lead with love. That's kind of a rule I like to try to live by. But as you're saying, it makes everything so much easier. Like just communicate what you need, when you need it, be honest, be, you know, there's different difference between honesty and transparency, I think. But nonetheless, I, and I think that's, probably I would have to imagine one of the characteristics of you that has made you so successful is your communication uh, and, and you know, you can meet clients on that deep psycho emotional level. You can speak with love. You can be direct and communicate well. Um, I think it's great. I really do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with my clients, I tell them, I'm like, be honest with me. Like if you're struggling right now, friggin' tell me because yeah, if they're going to beat around the bush or whatever, then there's no point. And me bullshitting clients and being like, no, like you are doing a really good job. Like, but they're not like, I'm, I don't try to be a bitch. Yeah. And I, my clients that, and as we work together over the months, they learn that, but like, I'm going to be their cheerleader, but I'm also going to be the person that tells them they need to get their shit together because I'm not going to waste my time and I'm, I don't want them wasting their time. So I'm absolutely open and honest and I tell my clients, I'm like, if you can be honest with me, we're going to hit your goals a hundred times easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And communication is everything. Um, I do have some of my values are like just integrity, respect and commitment. So yeah, just, just being true, being confident, um, being open to communication and everything with my clients is that's like the biggest thing. I dig that. And a lot of it, too, is just starting the relationship off on the right foot, you know, communicate up front, set those ground rules. Um, but everything that you're saying, it makes your life a lot easier and a lot less stressful because then you find the right type. You know, your your vibe attracts your tribe, right? So that's instead of attracting all these clients that do bog you down and it's more stressful and you're not making progress because the communication flow is on point. So, uh, again, I think it, it's really a lot of it centers back to not just the clear communication, but also authenticity, 
which is obviously something that you, you know, uh, radiate a little bit. So I, I'd be curious, and then I swear I won't keep you all night, but um, what does authenticity mean to you? Uh, just being true to yourself. Um, not, yeah, not bullshitting around, not trying to um, be someone else who you're actually not. Don't try to impress someone just for the sake of impressing them. Um, don't do anything. I always say, like, if it's not a full, if it's not a full body, yes, it's a fuck no. Yeah. And I think, like, being authentic, being true to yourself, <laughs> you're like, oh, my God, yes. I use the hashtag full body yes all the time, and I have a little dance. Maybe I'll, sh I'll show you on Instagram later. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's, it's just being true to yourself and the whole, like, self-care and self-love and self-respect and everything. Um, yeah, being being authentic. Don't try to fit into what society thinks is normal and don't feel like you have to do anything um, if you don't really want to. Just serve your own true purpose and whatever you believe to be your best thing.